I think that I consider myself a reluctant activist. I always thought I was just a filmmaker and I was just making films and, and that's all it was. Because I don't feel that the work that I do is political. I don't feel like the, the, the love story that I made in Rafiki is political. Only because I don't think love is political. It's just we associate politics to depending on the people who are falling in love. So if it's a straight white couple, it's not political. But if those, any of those variations change, then it becomes more increasingly political. So this, the conversation about the work being politicized has been very curious to me because I think love is love. The film being banned in Kenya was, uh, was, was quite complicated, it was bittersweet. On the one hand, it created a lot of buzz about, around the film and a lot of publicity around the film. But on the other hand, um, it created this intense struggle. Um, one, because I am a strong believer in my constitutional rights as a Kenyan. And one of the constitutional rights is freedom of expression. So when the film was banned, given that we have a constitution that allows us freedom of expression, I felt that it just didn't seem right. So we decided to go to court and sue uh, the classification board for banning the film. Um, and, and as part of that, we asked for the ban to be lifted for seven days so that the film could qualify as, an, as a nominee into the Oscars as, as foreign film, as a foreign film category. But although we weren't selected as, a for, as part of the foreign film category within Kenya by the Kenyan committee, um, the film was seen to a great many number of people. And for the seven days that it was released, it was sold out every night and every day from 10 a.m. screenings to 10 p.m. screenings. Every screening was sold out. And that's something to say about um, how the response to wanting to watch images of ourselves, um, wanting to watch um, films even though the government think that they are taboo, um, but also just says that we are a mature, discerning audience who can, who can decide what we want to watch and what we don't want to watch. But the law that banned the film is the remnant of a colonial law that has never been updated and hasn't been updated since the Constitution was, was, placed, was put in in 2010. So we're still in court fighting for the constitutional right to freedom of expression. And this film has become a test case to start creating um, conversations around what freedom of expression means in Kenya. And that, I think that of, of all of the things the film has done, I think that is its most, uh, its, its biggest accomplishment. I've just been so fascinated by this film festival because of its, its the way it embraces filmmakers and the filmmakers who've come before and have just, I've listened to their conversations and how candid and open they were and how receptive the audience were and also just how how well they were hosted, you know? And and that that's what drew me in more than anything else. Um, and I wanted to be part of that film community. Um, and I wanted to be part of uh, the uh, Virginia Film Festival alumni. I think it's vitally important that at any point that you have an opportunity to speak about um, not only the art of making work, but the importance of that, um, especially to people who are starting to create or starting to consider their own careers about what they want to do, whether or not they become artists or not. Um, it's, it's vital to add to that conversation, especially coming from a place where art has been seen as something of, of a luxury. You know, um, it's not accessible to everybody, and the art coming out of Africa has um, is is often just it's not as celebrated as it should be. So coming here uh, from from the continent and being uh, an African artist here or a Kenyan artist here, I just want to be able to add to the conversations about film coming from a, a space that is not often seen as a film environment or. Um, because we have different stories in, in, in a time where diversity has become a pop term, 
um, and inclusivity has become a pop term. I really, I really want to be part of that conversation so we can really understand what that means and the weight of that and the service of being able to create work in this medium because I truly believe it is a service. And if I can impart how important uh, different stories and different people and different voices are um, and how it and, and what it means to the breadth of humanity and uh, and redefining what it means to be human then I'm all for it and if in any little way it changes any students in, in the way they think about the world or even in the way they think about Africa then I think I've succeeded. So Afro-Bubblegum is fun, fierce, and frivolous African art. And it's art that has hope and joy at the center of it. So while it, although it started almost as, a, uh, as an organization or a collective, rather, it's, it's become more than that. It's, I think it's become a genre So because people have started calling their own art Afro-Bubblegum. If they see joy and, and hope um, in their own art coming out of Africa, they, they label it Afro-Bubblegum, which is such a wonderful thing that people are, are beginning to kind of uh, accept this term into their, into their own lives and into their own ciphers. I think that it's, it's an incredible gift because so often Africa is not thought of as the place of joy necessarily. It's often thought about as the place of hardship, uh, of the place of war, corruption or terror in all sorts of ways. But that is just such a limiting single story of Africa and telling stories of joy and hope are so essential so that we know that there's, there's more than that. Not only so that Africans can see themselves as hopeful, joyful people, um, but so that we know as humanity that the cradle of humanity was a joyful place. And we can carry that with us um, as, as something that we're proud of. And we can make Africa a place that we not, we're not only curious about, but we feel an awakened curiosity in a way, and we have radical hope for the continent, for the people, and for the diaspora that uh, that have been um, that have have that link themselves back to the continent. I think what surprised me the most about coming to the Virginia Film Festival was just the love and affection and grace I felt from the moment I came in. Um, it was so, it's been so welcoming um, and you feel an intense sense of kindness, um, which was, I, 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 I think it caught, it caught me off guard. Not because, uh, not because I'm not used to American hospitality, but there was something that was so authentic um, and so kind of pure about the way that I've been embraced when I came to this festival that I, that I would highly recommend for other filmmakers to, to come and feel the same way. Um, just so that you know that you're, you're loved and supported by people who you never thought would. Um, and that in itself is, is, is a beautiful thing.